Hey everybody, welcome back. Look at that view, huh? I thought today I'd go around the property and show you the plants that I have blooming this time of year in southeast Pennsylvania. Here we have my favorite plant, one of my favorite plants of all time, clustered mountain mint. It's impossible to show how many bees are on this thing. This thing actually blooms for quite a long time. This is just one patch of it. I have three or four patches of it. Coming over here, we have some black-eyed Susans. And I have an interesting little mutation here this year. These are all the same color until you get to this one here. Both of these light yellow flowers are on the same plant. So that was a cool little throwback. Over here, we have another big favorite of mine. This is the Russian Sage. This started from just a little twig that I ripped up from, I don't know, the city somewhere. And it's now three or four big patches like this. The bees go after this for quite a long time. This peppermint is just barely starting to come into bloom here. You can see a couple little purple flowers there. But in a few days, this thing is going to be humming. See, we've got a bee here already checking out the one little bloomed part. Now we're back to some more Russian sage. This is a separate bunch. You can see the bees are really attacking this stuff. They love it. And it smells really good when you walk past it. Here's the echinacea or purple cone flower, it's also called. Over here to bees share. They don't even have to be the same species, they just hang out on the same flower and chill out. All right, now we're over here at the anise hyssop. I planted some of these by seed a few years ago, and they kind of came up all over the place, so I was collecting them and just moving them all around, but the bees really love this one too. It blooms for a good long time. It grows really big, smells great. It's in the mint family, really good for the bees. Here's one of my oregano patches. These can also just be kind of split at the roots and buried somewhere else and they'll just explode. The flowers are really, really tiny, but what they lack in size, they make up for in numbers. This plant has millions and millions of little tiny white flowers and the bees really get on them. This cornflower has been growing since spring. It's mostly dead, but there's still little flowers where bees are still working on it. And they're still getting pollen and nectar from it. If you plant that one time, you'll never have to plant it again. It's just very prolific. Here we have the Joe Pie Weed that I got from a friend a few years ago. It's not open yet, but when it does open, the bees will be on it. Here on a little side note, I got a bald face hornet just peeling away at my bee barn, taking a little bit of wood fibers back to the nest. Got another one over here. They really like this cedar wood, I guess. Now we make our way over to the log colony. We can't even really see it because there's so much catnip and wild carrots and everything blooming. It's kind of blocking the entrance. But catnip is probably the biggest thing blooming around here right now. The bees are still squeezing in over here. And it's even on the other side of the log too. Last but not least is my cup plant. I made a video a few months ago before it opened up, but now it's wide open and this might be one of the busiest plants that I have in my yard. It attracts everything here. Um, if anybody wants seeds from it, they're, easy, they're very light and easy to mail. If you're a friend of the channel, I'll hook you up.
and it just blooms for quite a while. If you notice in the other video, it collects water between the leaves and the bees are able to drink from it. But that's my garden tour and my flower tour. Thanks for watching. Take care.